Welcome to another one of my trip reports. Today I'll be flying with Korean Air on their smallest fleet member, the Airbus A220. Today's trip report begins on the rooftop of the car park just outside of Busan's Gimhae International Airport. Busan is South Korea's second largest city, with the largest being Seoul in the north. The city has a population of approximately 3.4 million and is spread across 770 kilometers squared. From here, you can fly up to 40 destinations spread across 12 countries. By far, the most on-demand route would have to be the Busan to Seoul route, which is operated by four different airlines that departs on average every 30 to 45 minutes. I arrived here today after flying in on Air Busan and after a pleasant morning here in Busan, it was time I made my way back to Seoul. I decided to choose Korean Air as it gave me the opportunity to fly on board an A220. Just like most domestic terminals around the globe, the departures are located on the upper level whilst baggage reclaim is located on the lower floor. Check-in for Korean Air is fairly large and is located slightly left of the centre of the building. After a quick and easy check-in with a very lovely attendant who actually taught me some Korean, for example, Anyamaseo, which means hello, I was directed towards security, which were really chill and relaxed. Once airside, the terminal building is fairly empty, however there is ample seating areas. I managed to find myself a quiet spot near the northern half of the terminal. Whilst waiting for my aircraft, I decided to grab a deep fried spinach and ricotta stick from the local cafe, which was actually pretty decent. Soon, my inbound aircraft arrived from Seoul, which is a five-year-old Airbus A220-300, registered as Hotel Lima 8314. She rolled off the assembly line in Montreal, Canada and was painted in Korean Air's standard blue and white livery, being delivered brand new to Korean Air in September 2018. As my aircraft was taxiing past the gates, I realized that today's flight would be departing from a remote stand. Eventually, the boarding call was made and I joined the queue for boarding. Boarding today commenced on time from gate 33. As I proceeded downstairs, I was ushered onto one of the two buses that were taking the passengers out to the aircraft. Along the way, I was able to get a much more close look at the aircraft at the gates, including an Air Busan A321, Jeju Air 737 and a Jin Air 737. Stepping off the bus and up into the aircraft, I was given an even closer look at this afternoon's aircraft, including one of the massive Pratt & Whitney PW1521 Golf engines. Korean Air's A220 300s are in an all-economy class layout, with 140 seats in a 2-3 layout. Interestingly, row 1 isn't labelled as row 1, but instead row 28. Today I shall be seated in 35 Foxtrot. The economy class seat has 30 inches of pitch and 18.5 inches of width. There is a standard tray table that folds down and extends. In the seat pocket you'll find a safety card and magazine. In front is a USB port and above are individual reading lights, air vents and flight attendant core button. To unfasten your seat belt, raise the flap of the box. We pushed back from remote stand 45. 18 minutes behind our scheduled departure time. Please put your mask on first and then help anyone who may need your
taxi to runway 36 right via Golf 10 and Echo 5. Now please enjoy this simulated takeoff. Once airborne, we immediately turned left away from the mountains, setting course for Seoul. Flight time today is 36 minutes, covering a distance of 209 miles or 336 kilometers, cruising at 22,000 feet. On board Korean Air's A220s are complimentary Wi-Fi to all, however I never really seem to be able to get it to work. This seems to be a common occurrence. Once underway, we flew directly over Gimhae Sea, just north of Busan in the Gyeongsang Prefecture. Later we passed over the central city of Daegu, also in the Gyeongsang Prefecture. Nearly 10 minutes after takeoff, the crew were up serving drinks, which included soft drink, tea, coffee, water, or juice. I asked for a cup of orange juice, which was store bought but still delicious. As we approached Seoul, the scenery never seemed to change, with puffy white clouds and small cities scattered throughout the mountainous landscape below. On board Korean Air's A220s are three bathrooms, one at the front and two at the rear. Inside is everything you'd expect to find, including scented hand soap, and is beautifully laid out. Soon we commenced our descent into Seoul. Just like at takeoff, my GoPro footage was corrupted due to some unknown source. Therefore, I have replaced this footage with simulated footage. Now please enjoy this simulated landing. After landing, we taxied back to the apron via Delta 3, Papa, Papa 2, and Romeo. We pulled into remote stand 124, nine minutes behind schedule.
As I stepped off the aircraft, I couldn't help but marvel at the huge aircraft taxiing around me. In order to remain competitive with the high-speed rail services between Seoul and Busan, the price of flights between these two cities must remain low. I paid 90,000 Korean won, or approximately 100 Australian dollars for this flight. In comparison to 79 US dollars, or 120 Australian dollars for the high-speed train. Whilst the train will get you from the center of Seoul to the center of Busan and vice versa in just a few hours, who can beat flying for just $20 less? All went smoothly on the ground in both Busan and Seoul. The onboard crew were polite and friendly, if not a tiny bit robotic. Focusing on the A220, my short ride on the aircraft was comfortable and very reasonable. The legroom was more than adequate. What's most important is that I got from where I needed to go on time and comfortably, which is something not all airlines on this route are able to deliver. Some business travellers may complain about the lack of a real business class section on this aircraft, seeing as the airline's A220s only perform domestic flights, usually no longer than an hour, and for leisure, short-haul international routes from, say, Busan to Japan, I don't think many passengers would take this as a major issue. Would I be happy to fly on Korean Air's A220s again, and would I recommend you all to try it if you ever have the chance? Definitely. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Please like, comment and subscribe. Make sure to push that notification bell if you enjoy my content. And I hope to see you again in the next one. See you later.